Yo guys, my name is Phoenix and welcome to a new video. I'm sorry if this review will not be as detailed as I wanted it to be, but uh, I got exam on the way and I can't afford to waste too much time in editing. But I still wanted to review the set for you guys, so that you know what, in my opinion, you should expect from the cards of the Wonderland Dreams expansion. There will be a few cards missing because they weren't posted on the official website, but I will write about them in the description below, so check that out. So, talking about the review, I will say that a card is weak when I just don't see any use for it in Constructed. I will say that a card is playable if I can see it being included even in just one deck. And I will say that a card is strong if I can see it being included in multiple decks or being worth building a deck around it. So let's not waste any time and start with Woodland Band. Uh, I think this card is way too slow and uh, even hard to active, so I, will th I think this card is weak. Kindly Trent. In a deck with mostly neutral cards and uh, maybe Alice, this is often at 3 play points 3 4 with Ward, which is huge. And even when it's not, uh, it's just a 3 play points 2 3, so I think this card is playable. Flower Princess. This is a pretty good fairy generation card, and uh, it's especially good in a neutral deck where it gives you a turn burst. So I think this card has potential. Wood of Brambles. You can see this card as an overcosted fairy cycle, but other than ju just putting two fairies in your hand, this also has some nice board control effect. So I think this card uh, can see some play somewhere, even just tested, so I will say it has potential. Abby, the Axe Girl. This is a two drop that can trade with pretty much any three drop in the game, because with Clash it becomes a 4-2. So I think this card has potential even if just for some board, early game board control. Sylvan Elder. I feel like this card is slow and uh, the requirement of having three neutral cards is a bit too much, so I think this card is weak and will not see any play in Constructed. Elf Twins Assault. If the hybrid Forestcraft deck with neutral cards will be good, you can be sure this card will be a three off in, in it. It's such a huge tempo play. And even if you have just two neutral cards, it's a better Dragon Youth Fist without the discarding effect, so yeah, I think this card is strong. Magical Fairy Lilac. I really like this card, it always trades with at least one card, because even if you want to remove this with a spell, you have to waste a spell on it. So I think it can gain, it can gain good value, especially if you evolve it and uh, destroy something for free, because of course the, the Clash effect happens before the damage is done. So yeah, I think this card uh, will see play in Forestcraft decks, and I think this card is strong. Fairy Driver. At first I wasn't too sure about this card, but uh, think, thinking about it twice, you can deal uh, 8 damage when you have 4 fairies in your hand, even if uh, they are uh, zero-costed fairies. So a card that can lead to such a combo is... I think it has some potential, because 8 damage is a lot in Shadowverse, so yeah, I will say this card has potential. Fairy Dragon. The only downside of this card is that, is that it's really hard to play on curve, but uh, even if you don't, this is such a huge tempo play that I think this card will see play in pretty much every single Forestcraft deck, except maybe for the neutral one, so I think this card is really strong. Beauty and the Beast. The plus 2 plus 2 effect is really easy to activate, especially in Forestcraft decks where you have such a huge hand due to the fairy generation. And uh, the immunity from destruction is very good in uh, neutral hybrid decks, so I think this card is strong, I think it will see play in, uh, in some different Forestcraft decks. Kiss of the Princess. So this card is really huge when you're going first and you play it on curve on a 2-drop, like a 2-2 two -two becomes a 4-6 that can trade with any 2-drop your opponents play and still be a 4-4 four -four or 4-5. Four so yeah, the potential of doing that makes this card really strong in my eyes, and if neutral Swordcraft will be a thing, this card will be part of it in my opinion. Rabbit Ear Attendant. Uh, this is a 3 play points 2-3, which is already good to begin with, and uh, the draw 1 effect is not so hard to achieve, so I think this card is strong. Even if you just draw 1 card, it's such a huge value, and if you draw 2, it's just insane, so I will call this card strong. Axe Destroyer. I feel like this card is not what Swordcraft needs, and uh, I feel like it's way too slow, so it's weak. Shield of Flame. This is a very good alternative to hold Solid Swing. Sometimes it's better because it can, it can kill the 3 drops, like 2-3 three, 3 drops, 
but uh, it will not be a tempo swing if you use it on curve when going second. I think it's about on the same power level of also that swing, but this is especially good in uh, decks with followers with ambush. So I think this card is strong. Bladed Hedgehog. This card is by no means bad, but uh, I feel like Swordcraft have much better option for two, so I think this card will not see constructed play, and uh, therefore I'm calling this card weak. Old Man and Old Woman. When evolved, this card can make some very good 2 for 1 trades, even 3 for 1 if it survives, but that's a bit unlikely with the 5 defense. And uh, if that's the case, the card can be very good. Uh, I just don't know how much you will pull it off, but uh, I will still say it has potential. And uh, it's worth noting that it's good in, ba in banner decks. Young Ogre Hunter Momo. So I feel like this card is uh, being a bit overhyped. Uh, I will call this card weak, because in my opinion you don't want to play something like this. Like, if you play this to destroy a 5 attack follower, this is literally just a giant slayer, which is a spell that never saw play, like, ever. And that's even better, because it bypasses wards. Uh, you can say this is better because if you don't find a target it's still a 3 play points 2-2, two, two, but that's really weak, isn't it? And the rush effect doesn't matter too much when it's just a 2-2. Two, two. So, yeah, I don't think this card will see play, and I'm calling it weak. Macy, Red Riding Hood. I feel like this card will go in pretty much every single neutral Swordcraft deck, so the ability to destroy any follower just by evolving is such a huge value, and you can still trade for another follower right after, so I think this will be a 3 off in neutral Swordcraft decks, and uh, therefore I'm calling it strong. Council of Card Knights, another very good card in neutral Swordcraft decks. This summons three bodies, which is great, especially if you're planning to buff stuff or to make use of neutral synergies. And uh, they're not even bad bodies. I mean, one has Bane, one has Ward, and the other has Storm. So, yeah, they're pretty good. I can see this card seeing a play in that deck, so I think this card will be strong. White Ridge Swordsman. And I mean, this card is really great, but uh, the only problem it has is that it suffers of way too much competition on the 5 drop slot of Swordcraft. So if it wasn't for Swordcraft I would call I would call it strong, but uh, since it is I think I will just say it has potential. Cinderella. Since I'm predicting that Swordcraft will be the go-to for the neutral decks, uh, I think Cinderella will be a pretty good card and will see a lot of play. The amount of pressure a triple points for 4 puts on the board is huge, so I really think this card will be strong. And it's worth noting you can play this on uh, Super Cannon Swordcraft, because you can just put it in your hand every turn and deal 4 damage with it. Hero of Antiquity. If Control Swordcraft will ever be a thing again, I have no doubt this card will be part of it. The card itself is very strong, but it's a bit dependent of how the archetype works, and uh, in regular mid-range that focuses a lot on doing face damage is a bit worse than Fang Blade Slayer, so I think this card has potential. Dragon Summoner. Uh, 2 play points 1-2 that draws a card, a specific card actually, because it's a Dragoncraft card. Uh, sounds good to me, so I think this card has potential. Elder Tortoise. I feel like this card has too much competition in the 4 play point slot, and uh, I don't feel like it's too good either, so... I will call this card weak. Good card in Arena though. Master of Draconic Arts. So this card is okay when played on curve, it's still a 3 play points 1 4, and it's great when played in overflow, because then it would be a 3 play points 5 4. The all, the, with the problem of not being able to put too much face damage, but it's still a very good word with good stats for its cost. So I think this card has potential. Hippogriff Rider. This card looks very good to me in a uh, face Dragoncraft deck because it comes one turn before Forte and uh, because there you should have board control so you will gain value from its effect. So I think this card has potential. Draconic Lens. I don't feel like Dragoncraft decks needs this removal so I don't think this card will see play and I'm calling it weak. Fortress Crab. Mm, way too slow for its cost. Uh, putting another one in your hand is just irrelevant, 
and you have to evolve it to have the effect so yeah discard is useless in constructed and i will call it weak red rage worm when this card works it's a 10 damage to the face usually but it has to survive one turn and uh, it's a zero attack follower so i don't see that happening very much and uh, if it doesn't survive you just wasted your turn three just to save yourself five health so i think this card is going to be weak tilting at windmills and this card makes you waste your turn seven completely and you better win on turn eight because if you don't you just waste another turn because your follower will just die right after so i think this card is going to be weak and will not see play it's a bit too clunky jabber hook this card is so hard to judge because it's such a wide effect you know you can just destroy a two drop and get a genesis dragon for your from your deck and then such a huge value but uh, how likely is that i don't know i this is like one of the most hard to judge cards in the set so for now i'll just i will just say it has potential Wyrm god of the skies i feel like this card is being underrated due to the comparison to leonidas but uh, you have to keep in mind that dragoncraft decks reach nine play points way before Sorcraft does and uh, they have much better control options so this is represents a huge win condition because when this dies you can just summon a 14-16 Genesis Dragon from your hand to storm your opponent's face and that's really scary so I feel like this card will see play or uh, I don't know if in the regular Ramp Dragoncraft deck on, or in its own archetype but uh, I feel like this card is strong enough, so I will call it strong. Carbuncle of Mysteria. Another underrated card because it's a strictly worse Conjure Golem most of the times, but uh, I don't see it that way. I mean, it, just the fact that Conjure Golem exists doesn't mean you can't play this card too. So I feel like it can have some potential to be played, especially since being a last word effect, you have. You, you usually get one more draw before suiciding this, so you get to spell boost one card more. I don't know, maybe I'm, be, I'm being too optimistic, but uh, I see something in this, card, in this card. I think like it can see some play somewhere, so I will say it has potential. Witch of Sweets. The card itself is pretty great, but I don't feel like the Runecraft class has enough neutral support, so if that's ever going to be a thing this card will be part of it and uh, i could call it strong but uh, i don't know i feel like this card uh, can't be called strong yet and uh, i think i will just say it has potential apprentice sword mage this card is pretty horrible you're making uh, a neutral deck just for this and the only thing it gains is plus one plus one so that's kind of irrelevant and uh, I think this card is weak. Gingerbread House. This card can be compared to Price of Magic. They both remove a follower with two defense. The only difference is that this is a bit more uh, flexible because you can deal damage instead of removing one and then attack with, some, with something else. And uh, Price of Magic is stronger in the sense that it banishes the follower. But this also heals too. For, so, so I feel like this is kind of okay as an uh, anti-aggro card and uh, it may see play i think it has potential mysterian grimoire i feel like this card is a bit too slow even if just a minion based deck so i think it wants to play and i will call it weak illusionist in any other class i would i would have called this card strong but for the runecraft decks we know right now i don't see this card being that useful but the effect itself is very good, so I will say this card has potential. Golem Assault. I feel like this card is a bit slow, but can have some huge value. And uh, in Earthright decks, you usually play slow cards anyway, so that is not always too bad of a deal. So I think this card has potential. I can see this card being used there in the Earthright decks. Falis, Leonardian Mage. I would have rated this card strong if Runecraft had better neutral synergies, but uh, since there are not many, I will just say this card has potential. Uh, the effect is very good, 
So, I don't know, maybe in a future neutral Runecraft, just like Witch, Witch of Sweets. Master Mage Levi. Earthrite decks have already a very strong board clear on turn 6, but uh, this one does things a bit differently. I mean, Calamitous Course removes bigger stuff and banish it, but this puts a 4-4 on the board and uh, even deals damage to the face. And uh, you can even play this without the Earthrite effect and uh, it's still a pretty good card, so I think this card will be strong and we'll see play in pretty much every Earthrite deck. Abomination Awakened. This is another very very hard to judge card. I mean the effect is huge, the body is huge, and uh, how hard is it to increase the number of your cards during your turn to 9? Not so hard in these shifts. So, I don't know. This is such a, a hard card to judge. I'm tempted to call it strong, but uh, I think I will do the safe choice and say it has potential. Wizardries of Oz. I love this card. It's such a great card in both Daria Runecraft, where you just play it as a refill, and uh, in uh, more spell oriented Runecraft, because you just play every spell for one to gain huge tempo during the turn you play this card. So, yeah, I think this card is very strong, and we see play in a lot of different Runecraft decks. Haunted House. I feel like it's a bit too hard to gain value from this amulet, so I don't see it being played ever, and uh, I will call it weak. Skeleton Ogre, at 2 play points 1 4. And the effect is usually not what you want to do with 4 shadows, so. I mean, the body is quite good for a 2 drop, it contests most 1 1s, but uh, I don't have too much faith in this card, I think I will call it weak. Mad Hatter. And it's such a shame that Mad Hatter got such a bad card. Like, I don't think this will see play ever. You have way better 7 drops in Shadowcraft. So, yeah, weak card. Usher of Sticks. Um, this card, uh, I mean, the effect is not too bad. And uh, you can still play it on Curve without activating it. So, maybe it can as Maybe it can have some potential, even if you just play it on turn 6 with a Minty and uh, use the effect for free. I can see it being played in the future, maybe. Caterpillar of Riddles. Uh, I think this card is not good enough. On turn 4 in neutral decks you have uh, a better option in Alice. You can use this as an activator for uh, cards like Attendance of Night, but... Uh, yeah, I don't see that happening too much often, so I think this card is weak. Nightmare Executioner. I feel like this card is quite good in control decks, if control shadow will ever be something this different from Neptis. Because having Bane makes this card have like infinite attack against followers, and uh, the clash effect that throws your card makes this such a good evolve drop because you play this on 4, evolve it, attack, destroy a follower, draw a card, and if your opponent doesn't answer with a spell, you just eat another follower and uh, you draw another card. In that case, this card goes 2 for 1 and draws you 2 cards, which is insane value. But, but even if, when it doesn't, you still draw a card and destroy a follower and eat an opponent's, an opponent's spell. So, yeah. This has some very good value, and I can see it played in uh, some more controlish Shadowcraft decks, so I think it has potential. Poisoned Apple of Rebirth. This card is a bit slow, but it has such a huge value sometimes when uh, you play it on big followers, so I think there's some potential in it. Dead Moros. This card uh, is, has such a huge body, and the effect is not always a bad thing either. Like, it, it can be an activator for uh, the usual uh, last word uh, cards of the Shadowcraft class. And uh, I think this card is strong just for being a, a 5 play points 5-7 alone. Very good in neutral decks too, because it doesn't activate the effect of destroying your own board. Odile, Black Swan. This card has such a, a good effect and does something on turn you play it. 
it can even save you evolution points because it evolves itself without paying any and uh, I feel like this card will be very popular in the Shadowcraft class the deal to damage to everything is very relevant even if on turn 6 so I think I will call this card strong Corpse Lord of Woe this card is a joke this is I think this card is the single worst legendary ever printed so of course I'm calling it weak it would be half decent if it had the Mordecai-like effect even when not evolved but like this is such a terrible card Dark Alice this is like a Mordecai that comes one turn before and uh, it has a negative effect as a price for it but uh, I don't feel like it's always a negative effect because sometimes removing Shadowcraft cards from your deck makes your draws more reliable so yeah I think I feel like this card has a ton of potential and I will call it strong. Tove. The Bloodcraft class didn't get too much neutral support, but uh, this is actually a pretty decent card. So I would say it has potential just because the card itself is decent. But I don't feel like this card will see too much play because the neutral Bloodcraft deck will not be a thing. Demon Key. This card sacrifices your early game for some really unfair late game turn. I don't know how fast the meta will be, but if it's slow enough for this card to be played, this card will see play. So I'm saying it has potential. Big Knuckle Bodyguard. And oh my god, I hate this card. Uh, most of the time this card is a better piece of the cudgel, which is a super strong card already, because you don't need to evolve it to up to activate the effect, which means you can play it on curve even when going first. It gains full evolve stats, and uh, usually the banish effect of the priest of the cudgel matters only against a few matchups like Shadowcraft. So yeah, this card is insanely strong. Furtive Fangs. As I said, neutral uh, Bloodcraft is not going to be a thing in my opinion and uh, this card surely doesn't help it uh, it's just a Medusa's Gaze and that's a card that never see play I know it costs one less but uh, the fact that you can only use it on a neutral follower makes uh, this a bit more clunky so yeah I think this card is weak Boy Who Cried Wolf a 2 play points 3-1 with some protection in it means that this is a pretty decent uh, aggro card so yeah I think this card has potential Bandersnatch. Control Bloodcraft got some really good cards and this is one of them. You can play this card on curve and it's a uh, 5 play points for 5 with rush which is still very good and uh, can contest the board without you using uh, evolution points. Or you can play it for 7 and uh, in that case uh, you will uh, summon a big, a big thing on the following turn and uh, usually that big thing is going to be the new legendary that you will see soon enough. So and trust me, that's a really scary big thing. So yeah, I think this card is strong. And we'll see a lot of play in Control Broadcraft. Scarlet Sabreur. Uh, this card can lead to some nice trades. It's like a 5 play points to 4 with a Vampiric Kiss attached to it. But you can even deal damage to the opponent's face. So I think I feel like this card has potential. Little Blade. And this is another of the hard to judge cards. I feel like it has a fairly strong effect, so I will say it has potential. Emeralda, Demonic Officer. Uh, 7 play points for 5 with an Execute attached to it. And that's pretty good, because a 4-5 body is usually a 5 play points body. And Execute is a 5 play points spell. And this card can get Storm on top of it. So yeah, I think this card is strong. Carabos, we get Fairy. I can't see this card being in any existing Bloodcraft deck, but I think this card is strong enough to create a new Bloodcraft archetype, so I'm calling this card strong. Spawn of the Abyss, and oh my god, I hate this card. Why do I hate it? And of course it's because it has Ambush, which means it's not interactive. And uh, people were already complaining a lot about Albert being able to deal 10 damage on turn 9 with an evolution point. Well, this card can deal 12 without it, and uh, it can deal up to 16 with an evolution point. 
So, yeah, I don't know why this card was printed. I, I seriously hope the Bloodcraft archetype will not be strong enough for this card to see play, because I hate not interactive cards, and this is certainly one of them. Temple of the Inquisition. The drawing tree effect is appealing, but uh, I feel like this card is a bit worse than Sacred Plea, so I cannot call it strong, but uh, I would say it's playable. Maybe in some decks that really need the card draw. White Tiger. If this card was a 2-3 this would be amazing, but it's not, so it gets traded by the most 2 drops in the game, and uh, therefore this card is weak and will not see play. Monk of Purification. I feel like in this expansion they tried to make Elana a good deck again, and uh, if Elana becomes a good deck this can be a good card for it, so I think this card is potential. March Hare's Tea Time. This summons two Teen Soldiers for 5, one immediately and one after 4 turns. What is a Teen Soldier? It's a 4-5 with an evolve effect that deals 3 damage to any enemy, and that's pretty good. So since you're summoning one immediately, I feel like this card is very strong, because that's that would be a good 5 drop on its own, and this summons even another one later in the game. So yeah, strong card. Haiti. It's not too hard to get the, the effect out of this card, but uh, I feel like it suffers from too much competition on, of the 6 play points slot of Havencraft. Therefore, I think this card will not see play, so I'm calling it weak. Eagle Man. In a deck with most neutral cards in it, this can be a very good tempo play, but uh, keep in mind that it's a terrible top deck, so I don't know, I think this card has potential, but uh, I wouldn't be too sure about it. Alice Adventure. I feel like this card is way too slow, and uh, not so useful after all, so I think this card is weak. Now is Red Branch Knight. And uh, for one turn you're saving yourself from uh, combo decks, like the shift or something like that. But other than that I don't see too much potential in this card, so I will not call it strong. But uh, I don't know, I don't feel like calling it weak either. So I will say it has potential, but uh, I don't have too much faith in this card, even if it does look awesome. Odette, White Swan. And uh, of course this card is a bit worse than the Black Swan, but uh, it's a very good card in Elan decks. So if Elana becomes a thing again, I feel like this card will be played in it. So for me this card has potential. Princess Snow White. And this is an insane legendary in my opinion. It's a 2 drop that can trade with pretty much any 2 drop in the game and keep a follower on the board. And uh, of course it's a sticky 2 drop, it can trade for free for 2 ones like the Bloodcraft Wolf. And uh, the fact that you evolve it right away when it, this dies means that you can attack twice to gain board control with this card. One to suicide this card and uh, the other to attack the opponent follower with the evolve effect with the evolved uh, version of it. So yeah, I think this card will see play in almost every Havencraft deck, and I, I think this card is strong. Lion of the Golden City. Even when played for 7 play points, this card can be a very good tempo play. When you make it cost less by playing neutral followers, this card just becomes amazing, so I'm calling it strong. And keep in mind that uh, this is one of those cards that becomes stronger and stronger as expansion are released, because they will uh, maybe make a very good uh, amulet to go with this in the future. So yeah, I like this card. Goblin Leader. Uh, I don't know, I don't have too much faith in this card. I feel like it's a bit slow, and uh, to gain good value from it you should have this stick at least for one extra turn, to summon at least two goblins. And uh, I just don't see that happening like ever, so I think this card is weak. Angelic Knight. Uh, it's an okay card. I just don't know how this would compare with Angel of the World. I feel like Angel of the World is better, Grimnir is better, so I don't feel like this card will see play. I may be wrong, but uh, I will call this card weak. 
Ephemera Angelic Slaker. And this is a weird card because it's it has very poor stats, but it's supposed to be played in an aggro deck. And uh, those are not two things that go well with one, with one another. So I feel like this card will not see play and I'm calling it weak. Explosion. The meme card of the set. Of course it's a terrible card, you will not play this card, but the artwork is really funny. Into the Looking Glass. This is another of those cards that are very hard to judge, because the effect is so different from anything we've ever seen before. And uh, I like the fact that this card cycles itself, which means that uh, at least you're not losing card advantage. But uh, it costs two, so um, I don't know. I feel like this card can have some uses, so I'm saying it has potential. Actress Feria. Well, this card doesn't pay any stat for its evolve effect, and uh, it's actually a pretty decent evolve effect, so I think this card has some potential in it, and uh, it will probably see play in full neutral decks, or almost full neutral. Groof, Mountaineer Captain. Uh, I don't know too much about this card, I don't feel like it's that good of a card, mm. but it may be good as a killer for evolved 5 drops your opponent had, and uh, you just kill them without evolving, so... Mm. Don't know, maybe. I would say it has potential for now in a like full neutral deck, but uh, again, I don't have much faith in this card. I think this card is weak to potential. Rapunzel. This has such a huge body, and uh, it's not too hard to attack with this either, so I feel like this card can see play in neutral decks, therefore I'm saying it has potential. Hector. So this card has some very good things going for it. First, it's a world follower. Second, it has a demonic strike attached to it, which is a 4 play point spell, and it just costs 5. The fact that you need to have 3 neutral cards in your hand is not too much of a cost, because you want to play this in a neutral deck anyway. So yeah, I feel like this is the 5 drops. This is one of the 5 drops to go when you're building a neutral deck. So I'm saying this card has potential. Snow White Cat Sage. And this is another very good 5 drop for neutral decks. And uh, in my opinion this is even better than Hector, because the drawing a card effect is such a good effect, and uh, you're giving plus one plus one to an allied follower, which means that you can get that you can gain some very good value trades from it, especially when you're playing like a zoo aggressive uh, neutral deck, like the ones I built uh, in the Tempest of the God expansion. So I feel like this card will see play in neutral decks. I don't know. I'm tempted to call it strong, but uh, it's a bit hard to say. So I will say it has potential to strong. But I have faith in this card. Alice, Wonderland Explorer. And I feel like this is the best neutral card for neutral decks. Because the fanfare effect is such a good effect, especially if you already have a board. The fact that you're buffing cards in play and in your hand makes this card gain such a huge value, even if you just have two followers on the board and uh, three in your hand. Like, you're getting a plus, pl plus 5, plus 5, just from this effect, and that's huge value. The fact that it buffs stuff on the board means that you can gain some very good value trades from it, and uh, on top of all of that, this card doesn't pay any stat for its effect. It's still a 4 play points 3-4, so I think this card will be a 3-off in neutral decks, and uh, I'm calling it strong. Queen of the Dread Sea. And this is a neutral card, but I feel like it will only see play in Dragoncraft. And in Dragoncraft this card is pretty damn good. Like, for 10 play points you can make some nasty combos happen, like Genesis Dragon plus Urd. Or you can Bahamut and play a Genesis Dragon for to have a huge board. You can do a fair amount of good stuff with this card, so I feel like this card will see play. So I'm, I'm tempted to call it strong. And this will be it for this video. I hope you didn't mind me being faster than usual, but uh, as I said, I cannot spend too much time making this video right now. But I will try to make it up for it by posting a bit more content in the first days of expansion. So look forward for that, and uh, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. 
If you disagree with, with my reviews, please write it in the comment section. And I'll see you next time.